Okay everyone, it's Dave again. Um, I basically wanted to give you a uh, a review of all the different types of uh, training, DIY training gear that I've tried, uh, that I've made myself, that I've had success with, that I've had failure with, uh, and basically give you a review of my recommendations for uh, training gear. Um, so in this video I'm going to run through some of the different the hula hoop method, the uh, wiffle ball type method, um, how to do it, how I designed this, how I made it, uh, and how it attaches to the 450 and the problems that I experienced after I attached them. So when we get back I'll get into my DIY uh, training gear for your T Rex 450. All right, so uh, the first thing I did with uh, to make my own tra uh, uh, training gear, uh, I tried to use sticks, um, basic dowels uh, that were joined together by a wooden block in the center here. Um, that design worked, uh, but the sticks were. Uh, kind of hard. Uh, I used pine, but I came down hard one time and snapped them. And I said, well, that design is okay, but it just doesn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Um, slide my helicopter over here. Uh, plus, when I sat it on, uh, on it, uh, my training gear, uh, as you can see, is not really uh, straight this way and straight that way. It's kind of like an X instead of a cross per se, okay? Um, and with the wooden one, I really couldn't, uh, because I didn't have a drill press, uh, basically had a hand drill, and I didn't get the holes quite right all the time, and it was just, you know, there was a lot of issues that um, it didn't make it fun anymore. So. Um, and it was actually heavy. So what I did is I went to the hardware store. Uh, I actually went to Walmart and I picked up a long flag that attaches to a children's bicycle. Uh, the red flag at the top and has a metal plate at the bottom to attach it to the wheel. Um, those, that rod that uses, um, that is used in that system, I basically took it and I cut it um, I cut it so that um, it was, if you set it here on top, it was as long or a little tiny bit longer than the blades themselves. Okay, that's how I measured it. And uh, I wanted it to be um, a little bit longer than the blades themselves. So if I ever came down on it um, sideways, it would hit long before the blade ever had a chance to hit, even at an at a high degree angle like so. Uh, it would hit the ground first, uh, preventing my blade damage. So, uh, so what I did is I took a PCV pipe, all right, and you can make it uh, one inch pipe, one and a half, one and a quarter. It's really irrelevant um, what size. I took a pipe cutter, cut around the end of the pipe like so to get this little piece that you see. Um, little thin piece uh, then took a drill made some marks with a marker and held it in a vise and drilled straight through this way and straight through this way and then I cut them so that uh, the one this one rod is a full rod from here to here it's one rod and I just slid it all the way through these two other two rods uh, I made the hole slightly bigger um, so that I could turn or twist them instead of them being 90 which would be like this okay I could twist them one this way and one this way so it was kind of it ended up being an X as opposed to a perfect cross uh, then after I had that set I uh, put them and what I did is I took electrical tape and wrapped it around this end wrapped it around this end so it has to pull them together like so so it would actually pull them while the epoxy in the center dried. So I took some wax paper, set it down on a flat surface, put a whole bunch of epoxy in the center, 
uh, waited for it to harden, pulled the wax paper off, and voila, there you go. Um, very lightweight, um, very stable. It won't break as easy. Um, you can hit the ground pretty hard. So then on the ends, uh, basically took uh, these wiffle balls. I found these at a store we have around here called Five Below. Um, they, they had the small holes in them, regular wiffle balls. Um, and I'll show you. Regular wiffle ball, uh, as you can see, has all big holes in it. Okay, and when you slide that on to your thing, you're going to get this uh, basically because the rod is smaller. You're going to get that looseness, all right? And when you go to put a zip tie on here, all right, if you want to use a small zip tie, um, it will get past it. Um, so if you come down, you could actually push this up further on the rod and have to readjust it. Um, you know, you could try gluing it, but eh, I don't want to glue things. I want things easy to remove, um, except for obviously this piece is glued, but but I found these and I found the hole was perfect size. If I wanted to go straight through this thing, like so, now the hole is almost the exact size. I don't have that wiggle anymore. And if I want to put a zip tie on the end of it, put a zip tie here. there on the end. I cut off the excess, put one here, keep it from falling back, made it nice and tight. It's going to spin like I want it to uh, because when you're first starting off you're going to want these things to be able to move so that you can tell if uh, you know if you got your helicopter there and it just wants to do one of these numbers, right? these balls will allow it to do that. And you can see they move pretty quick with the uh, with the rock. So on a bigger wiffle ball um, I would recommend that if you can't find these smaller ones that's fine. Um, the smaller actually the better because it's lighter um, but I would make a hole the exact size and drill it straight through the wiffle ball all right, to the other side, um, and uh, the uh, the baseball emblem on a regular wiffle ball. Mine just rolled off the table. <sighs> this baseball emblem here is a perfect spot to drill a hole because there's one directly adjacent to it on this side right here. So you could drill a hole that perfectly fits this size so it slides on and you just have the bigger end on the outside. Again, you'll have to uh, double up on your on your zip ties uh, but you get the idea. So you basically just slide those on and away you go. Zip tie them on, you're good to go. The other thing too is that as you get better and better um, you're going to want to be able to adjust these to go in okay in further in further in further so pretty soon and you're just going to cut off the excess here each time you adjust so you'll maybe start off here move it into here cut it off zip tie move it in cut it off zip tie move it in cut it off zip tie and by the time you're close enough to the the landing skids as it is you probably won't need uh, the uh, training gear anymore but the other method that I tried, okay, was this same design like this, and somebody said, hey, you can use a hula hoop. And basically that basic design is this. You uh, put it on the hula hoop, make sure the hula hoop is balanced properly. You can see I have duct tape here, and I have some duct tape back here uh, to balance the weight out because I wanted this to be balanced the best that it could be at perfect center uh, which was a pain in the butt finding perfect center but once I did uh, I basically zip tied them on like so 
like that. Then I put my helicopter in the center and I flew with this big huge hula hoop. Uh, looked absolutely ridiculous kinda. Uh, and uh, it worked, but the problem I found is that um, uh, even with the bigger wiffle balls, uh, when you're flying in the air, um, you'll get this kind of movement, okay? Like the whole thing is just wanting to do this, all right? And that's because my head speed wasn't high enough, and sure, I could have upped the head speed to get rid of that problem, um, but, eh, you know, I knew it was because of my training gear that was causing the problem, because as soon as I took it off, steady as she could be. Um, as soon as I put it on, it would start doing this thing. Because it's just out of balance. It's not made for, uh, it's made, you know, the T-Rex is made the way it's made. It's made to balance itself out. Um, you put extra weights on it, you start uh, messing up with the uh, center of gravity on it, you're going to get all kinds of weird stuff happening up in the air. So the hula hoop, out. No good. The uh, ball and rod design, very good. Um, worked perfectly for as long as I needed it to. Uh, and basically the other thing that I did like about it was that I could take it apart so this was easy to store all right right behind my car driver seat and when I stuck my heli on um, I could do one inside one outside and on the other side one inside one outside and that's basically what I wanted um, and again I just took a rubber band here brought it around and attached it like so big rubber band and that kept it from moving around on both you know rubber band on both sides and uh, easy to remove no problems didn't have a bunch of zip ties all over everything that I have to cut off all the time this thick rubber band I found at Staples office man office max office depot whatever you want to call it anywhere office hardware supply store you can get these things so um, those are the, some of the things, I mean, this is basically how you design it, and those are some of the issues that I've had with some of the designs that I've built. Um, but this design that I've created was far superior uh, than the hula hoop or the wooden dowels. Um, it just did not seem to want to cooperate all the time. And the other thing, too, is that if you got wooden dowels on here and it does crack and break, you're actually going to have blade strike. If you come down, you know at such a severe angle you're gonna get some serious blade strike on the ground and you're gonna break your blades um, so again uh, having this flexibility uh, is really great the strength and flexibility is what you want um, but that's basically it that's the design um, and uh, you know very simple cut some PCV pipe uh, and uh, Put in your epoxy, put your rods in, let it dry, you're done. Okay? Um, now, attaching it, uh, like I said before, when you take the rubber band, you attach it on there. Um, I would use two of these. I mean, I know they're pretty thick, and, and uh, if they're new, they're going to last a long time. But just for safety's sake, I would put two on there. Um, the other uh, thing that I noticed too was um, with the 450, let's talk about the 450 for a minute, with training gear and without. Um, with training gear, um, the heli sat up off the ground, okay, so my tail didn't hit the ground or the blades go into the grass or the dirt, okay. I've actually uh, broke, a, broke a, a belt and strip this gear up here inside the inner belt gear uh, because my blades were actually hitting the grass and trying to cut the grass while I was trying to take off and you know you can see there's there is a little bit of distance here but even still it's not quite enough um, so you could add a piece of carbon fiber that spans the back uh, the back landing skid to actually make it sit more like that Alright, so if you're looking at the camera, make it sit more like this up off the ground. 
So what, when you're sitting there, it actually looks like this. So your tail is up higher in the air. Remember, when you take off, you have to compensate by getting some back to uh, lift off like so instead of lifting off like this because you'll immediately start going forward. Um, but that basically kept me from, uh, you know, tearing up uh, gears, tearing up belts, um, you know, and basically just ruining these rear rotor blades by digging them into the ground. Uh, so those, that's some of the experiences that I've had with training gear. Uh, I don't use it anymore. Um, and, you know, a lot of people might flame me for this, but once you start learning how to land and you land successfully over and over and over again, um, you don't need training gear. Um, because landing is, is probably one of the harder parts and that's really the, the whole idea behind training gear. It doesn't help you with hovering, it doesn't help you with forward flight, it doesn't help you with, you know, learning how to hover you know, side in, nose in, all the things you need to learn, it doesn't really help you. All it helps you is to land the same way every time, all the time. So that basically sums up my review of DIY training gear. Thanks.